So in this video I will try to explain what this thing is, but unfortunately without any footage from the construction process as I didn't have the time to simultaneously build and film due to other concurrent events transpiring in my life, so apologies in advance if this gets a bit confusing. I'll do my best to explain with the footage we have, but first let's hear what it sounds like. So this one is called Scythemic Rotary Transmission. Scythemic is basically the opposite of being anemic as far as I understand, meaning an excess of red blood cells in the body. I thought that was an appropriate title due to the deep red color of the light used in this sculpture, which is a fundamental part of its functional design. The term rotary refers to the motor, which also plays a significant role. We will get back to the details on that later. In addition to the motor, other materials that were employed in the creation of this work include light pipes, acrylic glass, 3D printed components and electronics. This is actually my second project using the daisy seed as the brains of the operation, which we will also get back to later. How it all works is deceptively simple really. The blade attached to the motor blocks the light of the light pipes from reaching light-dependent resistors, or LDRs for short, seated in the shafts on the front panel. These trigger a step sequencer in the daisy, resulting in sounds being produced. Before delving into the technical details, I wanted to talk a bit about the initial concept behind this work. Without going into the social or political aspects of Lebius Woods' architectural philosophy, I was particularly inspired by his perspective on spatial morphology and non-determinism. Woods sought to create spaces that encouraged interaction, collaboration and personal expression, and he believed that architecture should empower individuals to engage with their surroundings actively, enabling them to shape their own experiences within the built environment. I first envisioned a sort of structure that would change its shape in response to the sounds it wanted to produce, with multiple motors controlling the movement of several contact points that would trigger different soundscapes, but that idea got simplified as I started to consider practical constraints. Now, as I said, this was just an initial idea or an early spark of inspiration. And initial ideas like that always tend to fade in importance as the project develops. The only remnant that still echoes that idea in the finished sculpture is the motor, being the sole vestige of what was first intended to be a highly dynamic and motile work. Here we are in Fusion 360. The sculpture can be divided into three main components. First, the speaker and amplifier section, which houses not only the speaker and the PAM8403 amplifier, but also the user interface, which contains a volume control, jack output, fuse, power input and on-off switch. It is mainly 3D printed, but it's bolted onto these plexiglass legs, which fully enclose the speaker. I was initially worried that the speaker wouldn't be heavy enough, and thus making the entire structure easy to tip over, but I think it turned out okay. The second component comprises the wings and the LED board, which houses comparators that read the voltage at the LDRs. Whenever the motor blade passes between the light pipe and the LDRs, the comparators send one single clock cycle both to the DAISY and to the CD4017 chips at the base of each wing. This effectively triggers the step sequencer in the daisy while simultaneously progressing the light sequences in the wings. The wings themselves are made out of a mix of 12 and 18 AWG tinned copper wire and 3D printed parts that are glued to the wire. Lastly, there's the motor and light pipe mount. 
As mentioned in the intro, the LDRs are concealed in 3D printed objects that also secure the light pipes in place. Everything, including the motor, is simply press fit into their respective mounts. The plan was actually to glue everything in place with PVA glue, but it seems to be unnecessary so far. It might also be impractical to be able to remove the light pipes in case of future repairs. One extra thing to note on the light pipes is that they are mounted to superflux LEDs on the side of one of the plexiglass legs. These superflux LEDs are able to sink up to 50 milliamps of current, so they're quite a bit stronger than regular LEDs. The whole sculpture is running on 5 volts, so when factoring in the forward voltage drop, the LEDs are running on about 3 volts. Since I'm using four of these in parallel, one for each light pipe, and the collective power being drawn is 0.6 watts, I put two half watt resistors in parallel just to be on the safe side. You can have a look at the formula I use to determine resistor values here if you'd like. I already talked a bit about how I'm using the DCC seed as a sequencer, triggered by the movement of the motor. The notes in the sequencer are randomly picked from the harmonic series. This is not exactly easy to hear because of another important element in the sound synthesis, namely the delay. The delay speed is directly correlated to the speed of the motor, and when the speed is high enough, the delayed signal is so short that effectively a whole new note is produced. This is what creates the almost subharmonic glissando effect that permeates the soundscape. That is it for this video, and again I apologize for the somewhat unusual presentation. If there's something I forgot to talk about uh, that you're interested in, then leave a comment below and I will do my best to reply. I normally post schematics and code to my top tier patrons on Patreon, and I will try to post the information related to this project there as well.